Alright, so you've decided to start painting miniatures, or one of your friends is thinking about picking up the hobby and they have a ton of questions on where to start. And the answer is right here. Naturally, in the start everything is a bit confusing and you don't know what you need to buy, what's a must-have, what can be skipped or even what to do with the things you buy. I want to cover everything a newcomer to the hobby would need, beginning with a list of essential materials and tools. Timestamps are in the description for easier navigation should you want to revisit the section or just skip ahead. While the focus of my hobby is Warhammer, everything applies regardless of the miniatures you want to paint. The best place to get miniatures, paints and supplies is always going to be your friendly local game store. On top of helping out a local business, they often sell products at a discounted price, so check them out. The first thing you'll need is going to be a workspace. Preferably a flat area like a table or desk with access to natural light. If you only have time to paint at night or in the evenings, you're also going to need a lamp with a cold white light. Using a warmer light can make it harder to paint since it's going to change the way you see the colors on the model. Now that your workspace is ready, let's look at the tools you cannot live without. A cutting mat. This is a great way to protect your table from paint spills, cuts and other forms of damage. In the start you could use a piece of cardboard, but I highly recommend the mat as you definitely won't cut through it. A pair of clippers. You might find one in a starter set with paints or you can buy one from your local hardware store. You're going to want one with a flat back and a thin low profile cutting nose to really get in there when removing the models from the sprue. A hobby knife, preferably with swappable blades. After cutting the parts from the sprue, you're going to want to clean the cuts and remove any visible mold lines. A water pot. Since we're working with acrylic paint, you will need to thin down your paints in order to avoid covering details and creating monstrosities. I like to use two water pots, one for normal acrylic paint and the other for metallic paint. After cleaning your brush, all the shiny particles will float around in the pot and can get in your brush when you're painting non-metallic parts, and that can be annoying. You can use any old mug or jar you have lying around. Glue. If you're assembling plastic miniatures that aren't easy to build, you're going to need glue. I prefer using plastic glue from Grimm's Workshop, but there are other options. Plastic cement is a good alternative. If by any chance you're working with metal or resin miniatures, you're going to need super glue. I also have a video detailing the workflow for metal miniatures as well. A wet palette. This is a godsend that really deserves its own video. Wet palette will keep your paints wet for a very long time and lets you mix and water down colors with ease. There are a few versions you can buy and there is also an easy DIY version with a spare Tupperware, paper towels and baking paper. Brushes. You don't need fancy brushes to make great looking miniatures and in the start you will ruin a few until you get the hang of things. My recommendation would be to get a bunch of synthetic brushes. If I find myself in a store that sells brushes, I always grab two or three of them to try out. The ones I use most oftenly are the 4, 2 and 0 sizes with the addition of two large dry brushes. But starting out, a cheap synthetic round brush set will be perfect. Primer. I cannot stress how important it is to primer miniatures. There are brush on versions, but the fastest way is to use a spray can. A good coat of primer will not only affect the colors of your paint job, but it will also make your paint cling to the model and make it more durable and resistant to chipping. When I started out, I skipped the primer and later when I got it and tried it for the first time, it really changed the whole painting experience. And finally, paper towels. Last but not least are paper towels, good to clean excess paint from your brush, a must when dry brushing and generally good to have on hand. Let's talk about paints for a bit. The most common paints used for miniatures are acrylic, because they're non-toxic, easy to use and mix, uh, they go easy on the brushes and are easier to strip down and clean. You can also use oil paints and enamel washes to complement your tool belt but I wouldn't recommend those to a beginner starting out and we'll cover those in a separate video. Not just any acrylic paint will do, 
The one you typically find in arts and craft shops are not ideal for us, as pigment particles are quite large and have poor coverage. There are a lot of hobby paint brands that offer products with fine pigments and great coverage and you won't need many to start with as you can blend and mix them as you see fit. Getting paints in the start can be a bit of a pain, adding to the cost of miniatures and tools raises the price of entering the hobby quite a bit, but once you get them they will last you a very long time. I started out with Citadel paints from Games Workshop, but there are others you can use such as Vallejo, Army Painter, Green Stuff World, Chimera Colors, Reaper and many others. The key is to find the ones you prefer, but Citadel and Vallejo will give you a good start to your hobby. Your local gaming store will surely have one or two brands in stock, so check them out. There are also a few start painting sets, which are usually bundling paints with the brush and a few miniatures or tools, and they're a great way to enter the hobby. I also wanted to do a paint type breakdown for Citadel paints for those of you who will choose these as your starting ones. Aside from the fun names, all paints have a keyword that lets you know what to expect. Base paints are a solid color, high pigment, opaque paints that are great to color block areas of the miniature and are a great first step after priming. Layer paints are typically a lot less opaque and have lighter colors used for highlighting mostly and if applied in a thin coat, benefit from the paint layer underneath them. Shade paints are used to wash the model in darken areas as these paints will easily flow in all the cracks and crevices of the model. You can do some amazing things with shades, so keep that in mind. Contrast paints are made to save you some time by applying the base coat and the shade in one quick application. These benefit the most from a light undercoat, but can be a bit of a hit and miss on larger flat surfaces. Technical paints are various mixtures that can be used for different effects like blood splatters, corrosion, shine for gems or crystals and oxidation. Dry or air type paints are the dry brushing or airbrushing variants of other paints and feature more or less medium to produce a thicker and drier or very fluid paint. Texture paints are a goopy paste that can be applied on bases of miniatures and after it dries it leaves a different texture ranging from mud and sand to marsh and dust and various debris. And that's it for paints, the last thing you're going to need is a miniature to paint, so find a box that looks cool and sparks joy and get painting. This concludes the list of must-haves for miniature painting, there are plenty of other things that make your life easier but are not required to start. In part 2, we'll tackle the assembly and painting of your first miniature in a step-by-step -step guide using the tools we just bought. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next video and thanks for watching.